Here's five fixed gear bikes that time forgot, but I didn't. In the cycling world, there's the four big bike companies, which are Specialized, Trek, Cannondale, and Giant. Giant hailing from Taiwan has perhaps the most important history of the big four. I lived in Taiwan for two years and my wife, I got married by the way, thank you, thank you, is from Taiwan. And in my two years of living in Taiwan, I've learned about how important Giant is to Taiwan and Giant is actually from my wife's hometown, Taichung. It seems like pretty much everyone in Taiwan at some point in their life has owned a Giant bike. And even if you tell a non-cyclist in Taiwan that you're into biking, they'll ask you if your bike is a Giant. Pardon the pun, but Giant is one of the biggest companies in Taiwan and Taiwan wouldn't look the same today without them. All right. Boring history lesson. <laughs> From 1895 to 1945, Taiwan was a colony of Japan, and Japan was a lot nicer to Taiwan than they were to, say, the Philippines. Yeah, my grandparents have some real-life horror stories to tell. During World War II, because of Taiwan's central location in Asia, it made it a very important strategic and administrative position for Imperial Japan. Instead of Imperial Japan practicing their notorious wartime brutality like they did in a lot of other parts of Asia, they were fairly nice to Taiwan. Japan built industries, schools, hospitals, roads, trains in Taiwan and arguably improved the quality of life for the people living in Taiwan. But after Imperial Japan surrendered to the Allied forces in 1945, they agreed to leave Taiwan. Taiwan then had to transition their economy from a wartime economy to a commercial economy, but the wheels didn't really get rolling on that bicycle until a few decades after the war. Taiwan really banked on becoming a world manufacturing powerhouse. Clothes, toys, electronics, bicycles, you name it, they make it. Heck, a lot of people in the world even me, know the name Taiwan because of the famous phrase, made in Taiwan. The plan worked, and Taiwan rapidly industrialized the economy and the standard of living soared, and they became one of the four Asian tigers of the 20th century. And a big part of Taiwan's rapid industrialization after World War II is owed in big part to their homegrown bike company, Giant. Giant was founded in 1972 and they primarily made OEM bikes for Japanese companies, Panasonic, Bridgestone, Miata. But 1977 was Giant's big break because a little company based in Chicago by the name of Schwinn contracted them to make a lot of bikes. <laughs> Giant later branched off from Schwinn and started making bikes under their own name. Now they're one of the biggest bike companies in the world and they even make bikes for the other big three bike companies as well as a ton of others. And Giant's fix your bikes that time forgot, but I didn't include the Giant Bowery, which is a very important bike to me, and the Giant Omnium. My older brother was actually the one who got me into fixed gear back in 2012, and he used to ride a Giant Bowery. He gave it to his friend, it got stolen in the Bay Area, you know the story. <laughs> and that bike was actually the first dedicated fixed gear that I ever threw a leg over. Riding his Giant Bowery just around the block is what got me completely hooked onto fixed gear. The Giant Bowery was made out of aluminum and it came with an aluminum fork for all of the stiffness that a mid-2000s to early 2010s fixie foo could ever ask for. At the time that I tried out my brother's Giant Bowery, I had only ever ridden mountain bikes that were like three sizes too small for me or mountain bikes from Walmart. So it was an eye-opening experience to say the least. Riding my brother's Giant Bowery with NJS drop bars, Velocity Aero rims, Seguido 75s with a Zen chain ring, it struck me like a bolt of lightning. And immediately after that, I sold all of my video games and scrounged up enough money for months to buy my own fixed gear, which was a Motobi contract from Bikes Direct. Real talk, this YouTube channel and my entire fixie career would not exist today without the giant Bowery. But the Bowery did leave a bit to be desired for the fixie snobs. It came with compact geometry, it had brazons for rear cable guides, which is disgusting. The only way to ride fixed gear is brakeless. And overall, it felt more like a fixed gear commuter bike for the streets, and not a very good one at that because it didn't have mounts for like racks and fenders and had pretty narrow tire clearance. It just wasn't a proper track bike, which is what people wanted at the time. But these chain gang bracelets that I am selling are properly track specific. I made these bracelets in collaboration with my friends over at Harvest Accessories Design located in Taichung, Taiwan, which is my wife's hometown, which is Giant's hometown, which is also the hometown of 
a big percentage of the bikes that are made in the world today. <laughs> and the Chain Gang Bracelet is the world's first NJS stamped bracelet constructed out of bona fide track chain, stainless steel DID Track Racing Pro, NJS stamped chain links. And they're woven together by hands with a sweat resistant wax treated twine. They're available in both an NJS version and a non-NJS version, but they're made out of the same two chains. This bracelet was actually my wife's idea, so both her and I have the master link version of the chain gang bracelet, but everyone else is getting the chain links from the same chains and will be linked fixed gear riders all over the world from the same two chains. Check out the chain gang bracelet at zacalardo.com slash merch linked in the description. But the giant Omnium was a proper track bike. It had aero aluminum tubing, which was all the rage during the mid 2000s, early 2010s. True track geometry, decals that'll make you look fast even if you aren't fast. An aero C post to give you the fastest zoom zooms when you're turning left on the track. And yes, the giant Omnium did come stock with SRAM, <coughs> excuse me, Truvative Omniums. Even though Giant is in the top four biggest bike companies in the world, they axed the Bowery from their line in 2011 as the fixie craze was starting to peter out. But the Giant Omnium held on for a bit longer and that remained on their catalog until 2018. And now these two fixed gears from one of the world's most important bike companies are left to forever whip skid into the sunset. We live in an amazing time for fixed gear, considering how niche it is. We have so many options for very specific types of riding. There's still a fixed gear for you. That's amazing considering that there's not a whole lot of money to be had in fixed gear. People just love it. But before the big fixed gear craze of the mid 2000s, if you wanted a fixed gear bike, not a conversion, but like a true purpose-built fixed gear bike, you had to get a track bike. And one of the most iconic track bikes that was ridden on the streets is the Fuji Track Pro, specifically the red and black 2009 Fuji Track Pro, or FTP as the cool kids called it back in the day. Fuji is one of the world's oldest bike companies. They got their start back in 99. Not 1999, 1899, making this Japanese bike company almost as old as the bicycle itself. During the fixie craze of 2007, 2008, 2009, the Fuji Track Pro became one of the go-to track bikes because it gave a lot more fixie points compared to converting an old road bike. It had exotically shaped aero aluminum tubing, smooth welds, an integrated seat mast instead of a seat pose to maximize stiffness because remember that back in the day, everybody wanted to maximize stiffness at all costs. Comforts be damned. And just the look of it from the paint job to the decal screamed, this bike is fast. And on top of that, the Fuji Track Pro was readily available and didn't cost an arm and a leg. Adding to that perfect storm, in 2011, Nash Bar, the online bike retailer, had a special on Fuji Track Pros, where you can get that famous black and red Fuji Track Pro for the low, low price of $200. But like any good deal that sounds too good to be true, there was a catch. You see, a lot of track bikes come with a very important dimple on the drive side of the chainstay so that they can run bigger chain rings and have the clearance. But some of these $200 Nash Bar Fuji Track Pros just didn't have that dimple and the max chain ring clearance was a 44 tooth chain ring. Pretty weenie for a track bike that looks as sick as this that begs to be ridden fast with a big gear ratio. So buyers at the time could order one and just hope they get lucky and got a Fuji Track Pro with the dimple and could run totally normally with whatever chain ring size you want or they got a gimped one that could only fit a 44 tooth. Essentially an off-road gear ratio on a bike that really doesn't want to go off-road. <laughs> and there was no way for you to know which Fuji Track Pro you would get until you ordered it, opened the box, and saw which one you got. <laughs> and this was on a final sale, no return item. But that didn't stop people from snapping up the Fuji Track Pro because even if it was 200 bucks, some people just ordered multiple and hoped that they got one and sold the others for cheap to recoup their costs. This insane deal on the Fuji Track Pro from Nash Bar in 2011 only further cemented it as 
one of the most iconic track bikes of all time. Before the dawn of gravelly, cyclocrossy, track low crossy, before that was even a word, specific fixed gears. There was the Kona paddy wagon. <laughs> 15 years ago, cyclists saw skinny tires as fast and fat tires as slow. And fast forward to today, we know that that is not true <laughs> and that fatter tires can be just as fast, a lot more comfortable and go more places and overall just make biking more fun. <laughs> but back in the day, fix your riding was all about riding as fast as possible in skinny jeans and there wasn't a huge market for a big tire fixed gear bike. But for the odd few people that actually did want big tires on their single speed or fixed gear bikes, who were way ahead of the curve, there was the Kona paddy wagon for them with its whopping 32C or 35C tire clearance, depending on the year. Yeah, I know times have really changed. And its mounts for full fenders, it quickly became the go-to fixed gear commuter beater bike especially since it was just a couple hundred bucks for the frame set. The Kona Paddy Wagon was just the most workhorse of a fixed gear. It was made out of 4130 Cremoli, which is fine. It had rear cable guides in case you wanted to run it at single speed that fixed gear elitists could only laugh at. But these days, the Cinelli Vigorelli track bike even has internal cable routing for a rear brake, so... <laughs> it had a compact geometry to make it easy to get on and off, and it was cheap. It wasn't a bike that you bought for the fixie points. It was just a mule of a bike. <laughs> but it was one that you bought because you needed to do stuff on your bike, and you still wanted it to be fixed gear. Not a glamorous bike by any means, but it was certainly ahead of its time with the explosion of fixed gear bikes that can fit big tires now. Heck, even my Wabi Special, which is just a regular fixed gear bike designed for the street, can fit 32C tires. And that's not something that's like super groundbreaking feature anymore. It's just become the standard. Back in the day, 25C tires were considered chunky and 32s were considered fat. Nowadays, 28s are considered skinny. And as the rest of the fixed gear makers caught on to the trend of big tires, good tires, there was less room for the Kona paddy wagon because the newer ones were just cooler and more desirable. And thus the Kona paddy wagon was discontinued in 2018. Kona is still kicking today and they are mostly a gravel bike and mountain bike maker. The On One Pompino is the sexier cousin to the Kona paddy wagon. And not just because Pompino means <clears throat> fellatio in Italian. The On One Pompino came in the instantly recognizable sky blue finish. It had very tasty wishbone seat stays and useful features like canty studs to make fitting bigger tires with brakes a lot easier and clearances up to 40-ish C tires. I know like eight to five millimeters over the Kona paddy wagon doesn't seem like much, but let me tell you, five millimeters makes a big difference. Single speed cyclocross, rainy commuting, grocery getting, cat napping, the On One Pompino did it all while looking dang good too. On One is owned by Planet X UK, and they're still making bikes under the name from shiny titanium mountain bikes to full carbon gravel grinders. But if there's going to be any model that's the most recognizable from On One, hands down, it's the blowjob. I mean, Pompino. Same difference. A lot of bikes that we've talked about in this video have come and gone from the mid 2000s to the mid 2010s. Whether it's ideas or bikes, time will separate the good from the best. And today's video sponsor, Wabi Cycles, has been making the same fixed gears since 2009. I have two bikes, a Wabi Special and now a Wabi Thunder. I only care to own Wabis because they're just the most fun bikes I've ever ridden. Constructed out of lightweight Reynolds 725 tubing from the UK or Columbus Spirit tubing from Italy. That's like that top tier Columbus tubing. <laughs> Wabi's fixed gear and single speed bikes are responsive, lively, and solidly built. Wabi allows you to customize the fine details of your bike from handlebar choice to gearing to stem length so you can have a bike that is super dialed in right out of the box. If you have any questions about Wabi's, don't ask me. Fun fact, I don't work for Wabi. Wabi is actually a real brick and mortar bike shop 
located in Denver, Colorado. You could email them, you could call them, you could drop them a message on Instagram and they'll be happy to help you with whatever questions that you have and get you on a bike that you love. If you're interested, be sure to check out Wabi Cycles linked in the description. And Fixie Famous shouts to David K, Salvador Lombroso, Julian Corona, Brandon Black, Brent David, Mario Perez, Ted Anchi, and Breakless.Illmany for helping to make these Fix Your videos possible through the support on Patreon. And remember that life is short, but don't make it shorter, so be sure to ride your bike every day to be reasonably dangerous.